Hey y'all, today I wanted to talk to you about hydrangeas, specifically the kind that I grow here, here at our home, which are the hydrangea macrophylla or phyla, however you want to say it, which means big leaf. I don't know the specific name of these hydrangeas because they were a gift to me from my daughter about four years ago, but I do know that they are mop heads. They are the blue-pink variety that are pretty common in gardens around the south specifically. Maybe even your grandmother's garden or in local botanical gardens. That's where I first saw them was a, an arboretum. Now I'm no expert when it comes to all things hydrangeas, but I have learned how to keep mine alive despite the scorching heat we have here in Texas, which is zone nine. It's still spring and we are in the 90s right now. And it's not even summer. Now they say that these hydrangeas originated in Japan. There are some hydrangeas that are native to North America, but not the kind that I grow. These will grow from the East Coast to the West Coast, from the South up to the mountains. They are a pretty hardy plant. Now I know there are some gardeners who won't grow anything that's not native and that would apply to this specific type of hydrangea, but it, to me it wouldn't be a cottage garden without some hydrangeas in it. I think they're a very romantic flower, very beautiful flower, and they're very easy to grow so they will be included in my cottage garden. I plan to propagate cuttings from my existing plants and grow many more and hopefully get some other types in here as well. I tend to grow my hydrangeas in a very non-traditional way. I go against everything you're going to ever hear about hydrangeas as far as growing them in dappled sunlight or shade. Here's one of my hydrangeas. It's on the west side of my house in full afternoon sun, which blows the whole shade or filtered light theory out of the water, now doesn't it? It's been in this location for at least four years with no problems whatsoever. As you can see, it has nice big pink, purple, and blue blooms on it. Now, the soil pH is what determines what color your blooms are. If you want pink blooms, you add lime to the, hydrated lime to the soil. If you want blue blooms, then you add aluminum sulfate to the soil. And if you want purple blooms, then you need a neutral pH balance. The only thing that I do for these hydrangeas is I water them if we've gone a couple of weeks with no rain. They may have hydra in the name, but these do fine without a, without a lot of water. And they prefer a well-draining soil. You can add sand to the soil if you want, if you need to amend your soil because you have a clay-like soil. I don't have a clay-like soil. We have pretty good soil here on the lake, so it hasn't been a problem for me. I will give these some compost tea when they are blooming throughout the blooming season, about once a month. I need to do a video on how to make the compost tea that I use. It's not difficult and it doesn't take any other equipment than a bucket and some compost. It's not a brewed compost tea, it's more of a steeped compost tea. You can make it in about five minutes. During the dormant or winter season, I will add some of my chicken manure with the straw from their coop, which is behind me. Um, but other than that, I don't buy anything from the store to put on them and it hasn't been an issue so far. Now I've never pruned these before because I haven't needed to. These hydrangea grow on old wood so if I were to prune them back I wouldn't get blooms the next year. So I'm very careful when it comes to pruning hydrangeas. I will cut off the spent blooms and bring those in because they make a pretty decoration. Here's some I have in my living room. But otherwise, I just leave them alone. Now this hydrangea is the exact same plant, but it was transplanted last year in the fall. 
I didn't expect to get large blooms this year because it was busy working on its roots and had some minor transplant shock, not, nothing too bad. But it is coming back nicely and by next year the bloom should be back to a normal size. I did water this one weekly after transplanting it until about our first frost. So that's my two hydrangeas that will be multiplying as the years go by and I propagate more. Haven't really decided the best place for them yet. I'm, I kind of like to put things somewhere and see how it does. In fact, one of these hydrangeas is going to be transplanted this fall because where it's at, it was good when we first planted it, but since then we have put in central air and heat and now it's behind the outside unit. So I can't even hardly see my beautiful hydrangea back there. So I will be transplanting that in the fall. I know I seem to have broken all the rules where growing hydrangeas are concerned, but that's what has worked for me and you need to find what works for you. Because I have found that everything people say as far as putting them in shade and watering them twice a week or you know pretty often has not been the case for me at all. So I just kind of went with my gut and went from there and it's worked for me. I hope this video has been helpful for those of you that want to grow hydrangeas, at least in Texas or Zone 9 where I'm at. Thank you guys for watching and if you haven't already, please subscribe.